my tweezers or my tumor holding forceps and I pulled it out and I thought, gosh, what is that? It's moving. Take it out of my hand. Let's break down the case of this worm that was found in this woman's brain in Australia. That's right, I said an alive, wiggling, eight centimeter worm. I have never heard of such, and that's because this is the first case that's ever been documented in a human. I went into neuro because for the most part, we never do anything gross. We don't deal with secretions, we don't deal with orifices, we don't deal with pee, poop for the most part. We just deal with sometimes the occasional pus. But never in my life did I think that I would have to worry about a live wiggling worm in someone's brain. So how does this happen? She lives on a lake in Australia where this plant grows called Warragal Greens. And it's kind of like spinach, so you can eat it. So she would forage this plant, bring it into her house, and consume it. Also on this lake live the carpet python, and the worm eggs will reproduce inside of these types of snakes. Therefore, these snakes shed the worm eggs in their feces. So you can probably guess what happens. The worm reproduces inside of the snake. The snake then poops out the worm eggs. The worm eggs land on this greens that the woman picks, and then she takes into her kitchen. Then brings this plant into her kitchen and has these worm eggs either on the plant or on her hands or both and then touches everything in her kitchen. Any point in this process, whether she eats the worm eggs from the plant itself or from hand contamination or from contamination of anything in her kitchen, she consumes these eggs and then they go into her intestine and replicate. The larvae can then spread from her intestine, get into her bloodstream and went into her liver, her lungs, and then her brain. First complaint of abdominal pain and diarrhea and that's likely when the larvae were inside of her intestines and replicating, but doctors did not make the diagnosis at that time because it's never been described before. She then developed a cough and night sweats and was diagnosed with a rare lung infection, but they still didn't know. All these symptoms started in January of 2021, and then by June of 2022, so 18 months later, she started having complaints of depression and confusion. An MRI of her brain was then done that showed this spot in her brain. That little circle right there is the worm and all this white stuff around it is swelling of the brain in reaction to having a live worm in her brain. Then enters this neurosurgeon who then took the case and did a biopsy of this lesion, not knowing what in the world she was getting into, who then took the biopsy and pulled out this eight centimeter alive wiggling worm out of her brain to make the diagnosis. Infectious disease doctors then figured out what type of worm that was and put the whole picture together. She was then able to be successfully treated with parasitic drugs and reportedly is doing fine. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if that was me doing the biopsy, that is a whole lot more worm than I could handle.